My name is Cal Molinay from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today we're here at the Compass to spread the message of freedom. And today I have my uh, great friends here. My name is Ty Shinzius. I don't consider myself an anarchist, but I do believe in the non-aggression principle, which no means basically no human being should initiate force against another human being, and I'm with Cal on that. My name is Tyler, kicking in as a libertarian. What does freedom mean if you do nothing with it? My name's Sean C.W. Korsgaard, I'm a libertarian, and I'm just here for the show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll see you guys at the victory party. Thank you for watching, and share, subscribe if you can. So that's the hidden violence behind government and just immorality. Uh, and that this matrix, this organization, only knows how to solve problems in one way, a singular way. And that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. And I'm guessing the majority of the population shares this idea that people shouldn't be violent. Right? So why do we need the government to tell us? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, and and, that's, and that's, the, that's the big, uh, I guess, wizard's block. Um, I guess curtain that, that we're not, it's hard to see, right? Uh, so what government is then, uh, objectively, they have a monopoly on the services we already want. We want uh, they have a monopoly on security, on roads, on uh, judges, on courts. They even have a monopoly on currency, on first class mail. You don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe. We even have the freedom to compete against those monopolized services and provide a better service that's not going to be harmful and abusive to you, the consumer, right? Uh, and, that's, and that's what government is. But this more stance that you and I already share against using violence to solve problems, that's called anarchy. Like uh, in science, anions and canons. An means without, archy means rulers. Like monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. We can still have rules, but that's one thing government also has monopoly on. <laughs> they have a monopoly on law. So they don't allow a polycentric legal system. They don't allow rich, diverse uh, communities of preferences. Like a community that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not, right? So that's the immorality behind government. It contradicts that which we're already against, that we don't use violence in our day-to-day -day lives to solve problems, but that's the only way this organization knows how to solve problems. Um, and so that's pretty much what I'm out here, pretty much trying to turn to our community, let's unite with our serve. But like, for example, they want to say our voice is a piece of paper, to chat, it's a lever. They're afraid if we actually use a real voice. We reach out and connect with one another. We realize we're not that strange, you and I. Uh, we started these fundamental values for against violence. So if we actually start using a real voice, we realize we never needed a government to begin with. Right? Let's start turning to our community. Um, and that's kind of where this this will start. I bet they don't exactly like you standing here. <laughs> I know, right? Well, technically you got here first. Yeah, well, I am here pretty much every day. <laughs> yeah, they probably thought I was going to show up. Um, yeah, well, I have pamphlets if you like. I would like one, please. There you go. Sorry. So uh, what is anarchy? What is peaceful parenting? Uh, and it's also, you have to universalize the principle of uh, violence. You can't just say state violence is bad, but the violence related to each other is okay, right? You have to universalize that to also include the violence under children is not also okay, right? Like spanking children, for example, only teaches them when they grow up that violence is a, is a way to solve problems, right? So trying to uh, let go of this, uh, I guess, th that handbook that we're kind of given when we're kind of young. You know, like I talked to my mother too a long time ago, like, why, why did you do this? But, um, going back in her own background history, like that's what happened to her. And she's just kind of repeating that cultural norm. Um, so that's really it. I'm part of an organization, non-political organization called Liberate RBA. Liberate our community from the idea that violence will set us free. And uh, let's go in that direction. We're, we don't use violence to solve problems, so let's, let's keep going in that direction. Thank you for speaking to me. Of course. My name is Cal. And I'm Natasha. Natasha. Pleasure meeting you, Natasha. Pleasure meeting you, too. I think you awesome. They're saying the uh, the folks that uh, come up here with the huge banners that says abortion is murder and depiction all those uh, the children. No, no, no. They were right over there, not on the circle. They're, they're not right over there. They're not supposed to. So you see a lot of eight two eight nine five zero two. Eight two eight nine five zero two. Eight three eight two eight eight two eight nine five zero nine five zero two. Simple. And uh, what is your name? Whoever answers. Well, no, I'm asking for your name. My You're name is Corporal Nice. Corporal Nice. Thank you. I'm Cal, by the way. So they have a, they don't have any problem telling you other uh, the people who came up with huge banners just a couple months ago that abortion is murder and all that stuff and they sit up right over there. You're allowed to leave that alone, but because I, I don't have a political position, I'm not advocating the politics. But is it is it the sign? Is that why you're, you're discriminating me or pointing pointing me out? 
Is it that pretty it? Pretty much any, anybody who comes over here to do anything that you're not. That's what I was talking. You have a sign and you set up a camera and anything like that. There is a young couple right here who set up a camera who had this bag of potato chips uh, doing an art project. Did, 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 did they have a permit? Did you come up to them? Or did you wait until they left until you can approach me? I didn't see them. You didn't see that. So you're just uh, using your officer's discretion to just single me out. Did you ask them? I don't think, I don't think what I see is my discretion of what I see. All right, I saw you here. Yeah, I've been sign, here for a year. And I yeah. went and, and verified with them that you're supposed to be within the circle of the compass and had to be over here. Is this, is this the circle of the compass? I mean, this whole area is not technically called the compass. Right? There's no arbitrary That's line. The compass, That's right? a circle. This whole area is called the compass. That right here where they're sitting, this whole area forms a huge giant circle. Do you not see that circle? I'm not over here in front of the library. I'm not over there in front of the dining facility. I'm not over there on the sidewalk. I'm within the entire circle. What they told me was like pretty much right where their table is set up. They had to re register with them 10 days in advance to set up their table right there. Right. So, and if you wanted to set up something over in front of the dining center, you could do that. They, they handle that too. But to be, if you don't want to register and you just want to come out here and do whatever, right. you need to be within the confines of that circle. I mean, why don't you call and get it from the horse's mouth? So the, you're, you're, I'm talking to you. You're the one who came to me. I, if they had a problem, they would come to me and talk to me. Right? If they have a, an issue with this, yeah, I would love to talk to them. But you're the one who's approaching me. You're the one who's telling me I don't have a freedom of speech. You're the one telling me I don't have a right outside this arbitrary line. That because someone told you heard this hearsay information, you don't not even bring me any kind of code. You don't even bring me any kind of um. I have what they just printed out for me. Please, yeah, I'll, I'll love to look it over. <laughs> I'm not picketing. This regional demonstrations in approved areas shall not be subject to interference, which is there. That's interference. what they told me. So the approved area should not be subject to interference by members of your... Alright, well what interference? I'm outside the pathway. I'm not within in, inside anyone's I'm not walkway. saying you're interfering. Right. I'm saying th this is saying that you can't be interfered with as long as you're within the approved areas. Which they said that is the approved area. Right, right, right. So what if you're a student here? I mean, do you want to see my VCU card? I mean, do no. you need to see that? I don't. No? So you have a really there's a restriction where anyone can speak. Is that what you're saying? I didn't know VCU had such a restriction on freedom of speech yet. That's kind of new to me. After a year of doing this, now you're kind of singling me out. That's kind of new to me. That I did, not, had no idea no, no, that there was no, no We're not singling you. There was a guy out here with the big sign. Like you said, the, the church people just uh, like last week. We had to go talk to them. I'm he talking stood about where he was supposed to stand. Right. And that was perfect. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about months ago where that huge banners. I, huge banners. Were you not working here last year? I was, I've was. i been working for five years. Okay. And do you, do you this, remember this has been. No, I don't. I don't work every single day. All right. You know. All right, so I can't tell you about that. I wasn't there for that, right? So you're saying this is not permissible to talk to people? Uh, so unless I'm within I'm, here. So I'm saying a few feet away is from there, here is okay. Is that is that too much to ask? I, I, it's kind of bothersome that, that, that you have such a qualm to, to not just look over that I'm kind of right next to the circle, but you can't ignore that. What's the consequence of that? What, you kidnap me and throw me into a cage? You find me and if I don't pay that fine, you can throw me into a cage? Nobody's throwing anybody well, what, into a cage. Tell me, what's, what's the consequences of uh, being just a few feet away from the circle? I really couldn't tell you. I don't have that in front of me. But, like I said, I came over here making a request that you go to what they say is the designated area, which I right. just talked to the girl. Like I said, if you want to call and verify that, we're welcome to. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. I'll call and verify it. Yeah, no problem. 804? Yeah, 804 area. So, does the circle begin on this uh, gray tile, or is it actually the cobblestone here? This is the gray. All right, so, this is where he is, and this is where he's allowed to be. This is the difference here. In here. It's a few feet away. Just making sure, like, that's the brim, that's the line we can't cross. Alright. So now we need to. That's not a problem then, if that's the case, I'll give them a call. Uh, it's kind of noteworthy.
I didn't know that this compass is this whole universe. It didn't really, you don't have to express freedom of speech here. You have a designated area where it's a constitution so this everywhere else. This is proper property, not private property. So right? the, like I said, for any demonstrations, which I guess setting up a camera and having a sign makes you go from just standing there talking to being a demonstration. Right. I'm just talking to people. I'm not, I don't call myself a demonstrator or a protester. I guess it, I'm a community. I'm a, I'm a person here who lives in Richmond. You're I'm talking to other people. I guess. What am I demonstrating? You have a sign. You have a, you have set up stuff. You are having an orderly demonstration. An orderly demonstration. Yes. Can you define what you're, a demonstration you're a peaceful, is? Reasonable. Define demonstration. I, I don't have uh, because then, a then you are arbitrarily, the subjectively defining that yourself. Then, if you can't define what a demonstration is, anything could be a demonstration. Walking around is a demonstration. Talking to people is a demonstration. Putting on clothes is a demonstration. Do you want to just go and call them so we can get this out of the way? I they know. I think can, this is this is kind of entertaining. If, if this is kind of important. You can stand two feet out of the circle. I'm fine with that. You're fine with that. If that's what they say, they're the ones that. Are I'm kind of curious. If you were unfine with that, what would you do? I'm a reason. No, you might have to read sometimes. Like I said, this is not. I understand. That I'm giving you a call. Big, I'm giving you a call, but I, it's kind of important. What is there a threat behind this? If I don't stand within that circle a few feet away, tell them what their policies. I ask him what their policy says. Is the. Uh, bunch well, I'm asking. Bunch. What? What's? What's? What? What, what would you do? Know. Look, I don't know. You don't know what to do. You're not. You're, you're saying that this just doesn't come with a threat. That uh, to, to what? Did, did I come in front of you? I don't know. You're, you're here. You have a gun. You're approaching me. Yeah. That sounds very that's, threatful. Anyone who's approaching me with a gun is kind of threatful. I would say. Yeah. Well, that, that's your opinion. It's not my opinion. I just told you. I feel, do feel threatened. Hello? Hi. Um, I'm kind of curious. Uh, my name is Cal Molinay. I'm part of an organization called Liberate RVA. I think we're all on the same page here. I was going to say, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with either one of them. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just kind of curious, but nonetheless, we'll go through it. But you both, you both think he has the right to say what he has to say. Yeah, I have yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm from told that uh, free speech is not uh, right here, three feet away from the circle. Now, if, that's if, an you, if you were to strap that onto your chest, right? No, right, and then carry your camera now? around and walk through campus. Right, if this how, was a t-shirt. How, 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 how would you be able to <laughs> approach him then? I'm just curious. Because isn't, isn't, doesn't he have every right to videotape wherever he wants to? So if you were to strap that on his chest and walk around the outside of the circle, then, I mean... I'm not sure how that's any different than what you're doing right now, but yeah. you, you would be within the law at that point. Right. Since when was it against the law? I, I, I don't I'm located uh, like three feet next to the compass uh, in front of the library. Right, I mean, it's our Well, not in front of the library, but like uh, <laughs> not towards the. the uh, yeah. So I'll pass him over to you. He's not making I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Hello? Maybe if I like. Yeah. So, you know, like, so, so the problem is that filming isn't the problem, but it's going and making it. The yeah, point is coming out with the camera and the, and the sign is what he's saying. He, he is, of, yeah, he's right next to the voter table. And because he's not like within he's the actual circle. I thought you're always allowed to be this protest. Yeah, wait, I thought that was a little bit. He says it's a private enterprise. You see where the tile is right here? That's what I tried to tell him. Could you tell him that? Apparently you have to be in that part of the compass. So where he is right now, you know, like three feet away. Freedom of assembly is actually something that we have to So he has to actually stand in the compass, but he's arguing that he's violating. Well, no one informed me that I couldn't be right here. I've been standing right here in the exact same spot for over a year. Over a year, in the exact same spot. I haven't gone anywhere else. I'm not, not really anywhere else all around the, the compass or on the circle. Exact same spot. Pretty much, I'm, I'm out here pretty much every single day. Every day. Perhaps. Worst case scenario, you get some great footage of police arbitrary dictator whatever that was. oppression is and then uh, I wouldn't have any problems so again this is uh, you're saying again uh, so yeah I, I like to get information because uh, this is an interesting pretty much speech um, kind of clause here I like to take a look at uh, so again I like to hear it this correctly that have, being three feet around the circle there's no freedom of speech being inside the circle there is freedom of speech the Constitution only applies within the circle not outside the circle it's uh, people in charge of the
I mean, you did swear an oath to the Constitution, right? Not to DCU, not to your friends, or... I said you did swear an oath to the Constitution when you took this uh, this position, right? You didn't swear to DCU, you didn't swear to... to, to no. But the greater law of the land is the Constitution. No, I'm holding for a minute. The greatest law of the land is not DCU, it's the Constitution trumps everything, right? So therefore, outside of that... Right? I mean, right here is a lawyer to lie. The Constitution are, are arbitrary rules. I mean, which do you enforce? Which holds more greater power? Arbitrary rules that people create that circumnavigate the Constitution or the Constitution that you're supposed to swear in and uphold. I was in the military myself too for four years. So please, I, I, please enlighten me. Which do you hold more of value? Are you mute on the point? You can't. You, you don't have an, an opinion. You don't know which one's greater than that. I don't have to say anything. You don't have to say anything, but it's kind of important because if you're going to swear an oath to the Constitution, but you're not, you can't even acknowledge that that's the that's the oath you took. That that holds even greater power than an arbitrary piece of paper. That's kind of important to understand, especially for everyone to understand that you actually took a swore of oath for that, right? Okay. Well, then you can, like I said, she's, she's going to email you the policy. This is going to email the policy, but but you're an individual. You're a person. You can make choices. You have you have discretion. You have officer discretion. I did four years of MP. I already so know this. You have officer discretion, but of course, you choose to arbitrate uh, single me out, but not everyone else who was kind of standing out here with the camera. I did not come over here. I was told. Hi, hi. hi. I am back. Uh, I'm just waiting for uh, for you to, to wrap up. It is. Yeah. I should be fine. Okay. All right. Could you inform this to the officer real quick? Oh, he's VCU. Yeah, he just wants to uh, verify and see that it's okay for me. All right. Thank you. Hello. I think I just got here 20 seconds ago. Yes. This line right here. This line right here. It goes all the way on the campus. Uh, in the okay. circle here. That's how it's found me. Outside of it is it inside free speech zone. So where he is is outside the free speech zone. Okay, that works. No, it's just it, they say that because like you see the you good. Good to go. All right, man. You're still outside the free speech zone, sir. You're, you're, you're walking a thin line, sir. What if your camera's set up on a single pole? Yeah, you're going to have to put it in the free speech zone. <laughs> All right? Okay. Right. It's you now, right? Hold your ground. Thanks. Okay, I'm trying to give you some cupcakes here. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you win that? Yeah, I won that. <laughs> oh, I don't agree with you, but that's awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks. Appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> Important. Right? I mean, that's that's what all this is about, right? Right, and I'm not yelling at people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying to tell you. Uh, that free speech is only uh, within three feet oh, inside like, the circle. I'm three feet away from it. I'm not like impending traffic. Uh, right, exactly. I mean, I thought the Constitution well, trumps all rules. I think the issue is Supreme law. Like, right? It's <laughs> public property. Right? Public, yeah. You can have a camera yeah. anywhere well, Thank you. Thank you. Like, and, and for me, I like I'm just I'm just non, it's a non-political organization. So I'm not talking about Democrats or Republican or Libertarians or Green Party. Just pretty much turning our community and turning away from government. And that's all I advocate for. Non-violently, just pretty much just talking. I, I know, but like you know, I fought like, for 20 not, years in the army, so you could have the right to. Do. I did four years in the military myself. <laughs> so you go. Yeah. <laughs> How did you end up winning? Uh, who did? I know, right? Well, are you obviously serious? they don't want to create an issue. So yeah. it's like, well, let me talk to your. Or your manager so it's just passed me to someone higher up and that's pretty much where I went to so like look as long as I'm not like impeding traffic it's like I'm not impeding traffic yeah. I'm pretty much here on the side I'm really close to the circle I mean I've been doing this for a year now yeah I'm right here pretty much every day <laughs> never had a problem I mean this is like my spot <laughs> yeah, so no one ever informed me that you need to ask permission that you need a piece of paper to to, to, to talk to people yeah because I met you over there yeah <laughs> right over there. And, and so I, I came I was walking by and I saw him like, why, why in the world? Yeah. Oh, well, uh, yeah, uh, this is Derek. Hi, um, Charlie. Gordon. Hi. And Cyrus. What's up? Good to meet you. I don't think he likes your opinion. Well, yeah, I know, right? And the well, thing at least he followed, he at least he followed he what you were supposed to do. You and you were just like, nope. nope.
Sorry, who do you, please. Did he, did, is the reason he went away is because he was told? Yeah, he was told, yeah. So why, uh, so why did he come over here the first place? You should charge him for oppression. I know, right? It's like, it's like, look, you're coming at me with a gun and you're telling me I can't stand here. Like, you're telling me pretty much, what are my options if I don't move? He's like, oh, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Of course you know. <laughs> right? You if, know. If, 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 if there is no <laughs> alternative, then why don't you just walk away? Right? You have offers of discretion. You don't, I mean, the Constitution says you don't have to uphold the law. You don't have to protect citizens. The only time you have a constitutional duty to do it is when they're in your custody. So other than that is offers of discretion wherever you go. You don't have to so uphold what, all this If he's law. wrong and went away, why did he come here in the first place? Uh... I don't know, somebody probably just did a little complaint. It's like, that guy's holding a sign. Uh, right next to the election sign. Yeah. Uh, well, they're cool. I mean, they're cool. Yeah, yeah, they're cool. They're cool. I'm here every day. I haven't had a problem. I'm not like, <laughs> Well, congratulations. Thanks, man. Good Good to see you. Yeah. you too, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad I didn't know you. Good to see you. Oh, Hello. oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Thanks for the cupcakes, man. Yes, they're really good. Emma made them. Oh, oh, we decorated them. Some of them, they're trying to make A's. Oh, on them. that was so great, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll return the Tupperware. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's cool. Yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, how you been? How you guys been? You guys have a good time at Fallout? Oh, yeah. I liked it yeah. a lot. That was, was really cool. Good. Yeah. I'm glad they liked us. Yeah, too. absolutely. Yeah, they said that we were more than uh, we're going to host it again in December. So pretty much every other month. So that's the hidden violence behind government. And that only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way. And that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. Wow. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I completely agree with that, actually. Yeah? I mean, I wouldn't want to use violence on anybody just because. Right. Yeah, so. I, you know what, you just opened my eyes. Yeah, all right, cool. All right, so, so this moral position then that you and I share against using violence to solve problems, that's called anarchy. Like in science, anions and cations, and means without, archy means rulers. Like monarchy, one political ruler, anarchy means without political rulers. We can still have rules, but what government has is a monopoly on law. They have a monopoly on courts, on judges, on security, on roads, on currency, first class mail. You don't have the freedom to cancel, unsubscribe, or even have the freedom to compete against the services and to provide something better that's not going to be harmful and abusive to you, the consumer. Right? So we can still have law, we can still have rules, we can still have all these rich, diverse communities of preferences. But what government is then, through that political power, they force only one preference onto everyone in the geographic region. You don't have the freedom to associate or disassociate. Right? So and, and, and so that's the direction I'm trying to go here right now. I'm trying to talk about uh, trying to turn to our community and turning away from government. Sure. Right. Well, let me give you some pamphlets if you're interested. Here you go, man. Appreciate it. I yeah, definitely yeah. look into this. All right, man. Take good care, man. Thank you. Of course. Hey. Hi. You curious? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> of course. Absolutely. What is this? Oh, um, I'm in an entomology class. This is so cool. Did you collect this yourself? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I'm actually way behind. Oh. <laughs> I, I, need, I need a lot more. Really? <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. It's like, wow, that's pretty cool. I, I, I mean, I, I can't imagine. My girlfriend sometimes collects some of these things. I see finds or drop dead somewhere. Are you capturing these? Are you finding these? Yeah, I'm capturing. You're capturing them? That is pretty cool that you can capture that one too. Oh, they, they, there's like tons of these around like wetland areas. Oh, that's good, that's good. Yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, okay, well, I'll step right over here. All right, so three simple questions. Okay. And then very briefly discuss the hidden violence behind government. Um, and ask what your thoughts and comments are. Okay. That's good? Okay. So that's the hidden violence behind this matrix, the immorality of government, and that it only knows how to solve problems though through one way, a singular way, and that is through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I, my friend here, Kyle, good yeah. to see you, man. Good to see you too. Already share. Okay. Uh, what about the social contract? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll be that too. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, the social contract is not a real contract. Well, I mean, you can stay for the conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know if you're like leaving or going. Yeah, I, I haven't, uh, like, I mean, the social contract is just the idea of um, people are born into a contract. Uh, I mean, the contract is, you know, most importantly defined by, you know, both, peop both people accept it. And of course, yeah, there, there is the argument that, you know, we, we need those services, but the thing is, you don't need to force people to sign a contract to, to get those services. I mean, I mean, I mean, people have this idea that the only way that you can um, defend property is by, you know, making people born into it. And there's a much better way. The, the better way, of course, is to, you know, let that contract be conditional on landowners, because nobody acquires land by birth, um, you know, or by accident. 
I mean, th th those who are given land, you know, could just say, hey, it comes with conditions that you have to, you know, defend it. You need to make agreements. But but that's all government does. I mean, it. I mean, it does commit the violence that he was talking about. But you know, we, we all see, you know, the good that it does. That is, defend people. Defending is important, but that's a function of land. And if you just have that managed by landowners, then it doesn't need to be something that's forced on people because, you know, effectively now it is. Yeah. I, I mean. Um, so the social contract is not a real contract. I want, I want a real contract, though. Something tangible, something like a mortgage something contract. That you sign. Yeah, something I can give my actual consent to, right? Yeah, but I, it's it's like a, you know, if you, like a lot of people are inherently, you know, selfish. Right? Sure. Like they're, you know, I, you and I, like we don't want to hurt anybody. Yeah. But there are people who, you know, do. That's want to do that. Right. You know, and uh, like the. And the social contract is basically like we allow people to rule in exchange for them, you know, dealing with people that take care of right, us. Right, yeah. right. Okay, so so you, I mean, you still have a need for security then, right? Yeah. And that's what. So the thing is, what government then has a monopoly on these services, right? Uh, they have a monopoly on law, on court, on justice. They even have a monopoly on security, right? I, I want security too, but I want one where I can choose who's going to provide me security. Look at their track record. Look at like they haven't abused or you know that kind of threat. And if they do, they go bankrupt the next day. Like, I mean, enough, and right? and the funny thing about that is, to some extent, you can't hire people to defend you. But if there is any disagreement over you know the justice of that defense, there is going to be immediate like overpowering you know force if the state needs to get involved. And and the whole idea is. Um, you know, justice is two things. It's two very separate, distinct, but very simple to understand parts. And when you put them together, people get confused. But that deciding, you know, what the law is, deciding how force may be used, because of course, in, if you're going to live in society where people are bad, you need to sometimes have the force or the threat of force, at least, to defend people. And you know, if you get rid of the government, that doesn't go away. I mean, people, there's the threat of force still exists, but it's backed by you know, the ownership of property that everyone has. And, you know, people have a threat of force not to steal, not to, you know, do whatever else. But today, we have a threat of force not to break any laws that people make up, that the majority make up or their representatives. And, um, and so part of it is deciding, you know, what the law is, and part of it is enforcing. The thing is, once information is public, you know, once it, it has been declared, it is very easy to have a market organized even in cases where people can't pay, because you know violence hurts everybody. Violence hurts yeah. the c entire community. And if there are people who are engaged in a dispute and they have no other affordable alternative other than violence to solve their problems, you know, with, whether it's poor people in a dispute or landowners that, that can't afford, um, that that service, that protection of, of people, is so valuable that it is going to be worth it for rich landowners, you know, anywhere in the area to maintain order. You know, ri rich landowners owners will pay for the strong men to defend people in, in the area because it increases the value of their land. Of course, okay. anybody that will pay for something if it increases the value of their stuff in that they benefit overall. And, and we would expect the rich landowners to do that. The thing is, we shouldn't connect those two things um, we shouldn't connect the enforcement with the determining of, of the law. And of course, we do have quote unquote independent police and judges, and, and they are sometimes independent with respect to some things, but it, it, it's not complete independence. It's still a monopoly. Yeah. So, um, and, and it wouldn't be a monopoly if judges and courts were competitive, if they were allowed to compete freely, uh, while at the same time their rulings could be binding. I mean, I mean, how is there order if there are competitive? Oh, judges. so kind of like uh, you have competitive nightclubs, but each nightclub have their own particular rules, but they have their security, the bouncers, right? So you have some examples like this, like this today. You also have like golf course communities, homeowners associates. You have the rules when you go in there. They have security. You even provide the roads. <laughs> uh, so you still have. So those are those are the rules that people will agree upon and have real explicit contracts to agreement to those rules and the consequences of those rules. Um, like going to a mall, for example, you don't pay for security. You know they're on the segways going around, but that's the kind of security you would have in a free volunteer society where you're not fearful of that, <laughs> right? You're not afraid to talk to them or approach them. Uh, they won't talk to you in a threatening manner because you know they could lose their jobs. Right. Yeah.
Uh, there's no hiding behind uh, immunity, <laughs> right? It's like, look, you're giving our business a bad name. We're going to have to let you go and hire someone else who's not as abrasive as you are to the customers, right? Yeah. So that's what it'll be like in a free voluntary society where you are in charge, uh, finally, right? The consumer's in charge. Like Netflix trying to raise their prices overnight a year ago, and people are like, oh, forget that. Cancel or subscribe. Go to Hulu. Yeah. Right, and that's what it'll be like. Sorry, uh, you're abusive. I don't like your service. Your security sucks. Um, you're very, you seem like a very corrupt person. You know, uh, and I'm, I'm gone. Or now you can have the freedom because there's no monopoly security the government has to compete. And now you can provide a better service. You can so, enter the market. So you think uh, like the order of society should be like similar to like capitalism? A free market, yeah. yeah. Uh, outside corporations, so this is sometimes a confusion. Um, like, without a government, there's no corporation. All a corporation is, is a piece of paper back and forth by the government that says that you are allowed to escape personal liability. You know, limited liability cap for your own actions. But corporations offset that by lowering uh, employee salaries, by raising consumer prices. So without a government, there's no corporation. It goes back to the way it used to be, where you're held personally liable for your actions. Right, and that's the way it has to be, right? Not a sock puppet, not a corporation, not a fictional um, being. A fictional thing that you can sue that, you know, <laughs> if it loses all its money, the people who created it, you know, don't have an answer. Yeah, how yeah. yeah, they escape, yeah. yeah. So, and that's, and that's anarchy. That's uh, free market anarchism, or sometimes also known as anarcho-capitalism. Uh, trying to get you a free and voluntary society where it's nothing but consent. This uh, relationship with government is coercive, right? You don't agree to the particular rules they force on you into that geographic region, like cannabis again, right? Yeah. Like you can, and so in a free voluntary society, you can have rich, diverse communities of preferences with a lot of different kinds of rules. You can have one that's 420 friendly, one across the street that's not. Right? So, I mean, that's, then you never have to be afraid or fearful or ashamed or uh, scared of being, you know, kidnapped or caged for, yeah. for just a preference. I, I mean, most people would agree on like a few things, like, you know, you shouldn't kill people. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's not, yeah. And like, I, I, I don't, I don't feel it really addresses like, you know, uh, inherent rights, you know. Oh, inherent rights? Uh, please uh, uh, elaborate. I'm not an expert on. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not really trying to talk down to you. Okay, okay. no, no, no. I was just trying to. I just, I just got into a conversation with someone about rights uh, last Friday. Um, the thing is, uh, for me, I, I don't really so much believe in rights. I just believe in the freedom to do whatever you want to do, as long as you're not infringing on someone else. Yeah. Right. And that's that's really it. Um, and, and I once read a commentary on that. That like, you know, pretty much all human rights are just they can be interpreted as property rights. Yeah. You know, property rights in yourself. Property rights in, in your own movement. Like to to some extent. And then you know the property rights and the things that, that you, you know, acquire lawfully um, or or justly, and um, you, you know the right to free speech. You know, as we all know, it doesn't mean that you can. Uh, it doesn't give you the right to somebody else's printing press, but it gives you the right to use the printing press that you've acquired to to use however you want, and the right to let other people use your printing press however you see fit. And most human rights, you know, are kind of like that. They, they have limits, like natural limits you know, in their uh, yeah. domain of feasibility, but that domain of feasibility is strictly defined by, you know, each person is free to do whatever they want with their own justly acquired property. And, and you know, a, a strict enforcement of that would, uh, you know, wouldn't be too different from, from the world we have today, but it would be different in a few critical ways. Yeah, uh, like us, like whenever you have a monopoly on anything, though, the, the cost always rises. Like the cost of social security, you'll never yeah. have. That's another forced service on the, that was forced onto you before you were born. Um, and the quality always depreciates, right? Um, you can look at pretty much like uh, USPS, sixteen billion dollars in debt. NASA losing public funding. Uh, the collapse of Detroit. Uh, unsustainable uh, liabilities that uh, that that government is uh, pretty much what they're funded on. You know, that's why the NASA debt keeps rising and rising and rising. Pretty much. Is just going to be another collapse like room. Um, so we're, we're trying to trying to see if we can do a peaceful transition. Uh, you know, like for example, the currency that you hold in your pocket today has lost over 97 percent of its value. So it's got three percent left to go. Um, so that's the, so. I mean, have you heard of Bitcoin? Of what? Bitcoin. 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 Yeah. All right. Digital currency. So uh, I'm just trying to show like a lot of different examples. So the government has a monopoly in these services, and any time you have a monopoly in these services, again the quality uh, depreciates and the cost always goes up. But in a free market, it's the complete opposite, right? The cost always goes down and the quality continues to improve. I'm not sure that like currency is really relevant. 
Well, I would say currency in that uh, they have a monopoly of currency because of the monopoly is lost over 97%. Whereas you don't have the freedom to compete against that monopoly. Yeah. Uh, like the guy with the Liberty Dollar tried to create his own currency a few years ago, and uh, IRS came in, seized his assets, and threw him into a cage. Um, but there's a, a digital currency out there called Bitcoin. Uh, the government hates it, doesn't like it because they can't regulate it. It's decentralized. Um, it's a peer-to-peer -peer network. And so uh, that's a form of uh, exchange. You know, money is like another commodity, like a paper clip or a car. You know, it's, but it's just a forced commodity. We're, we're, we don't have any freedom to exchange and barter with. I mean, I mean, currency is just a like representation of like this. You know, this yeah. value, like I, I can get things because I have this many money. You know? Yeah, yeah. The money itself doesn't, I think it's just a representation yeah. of worth. Yeah. See, right, right there, you're ahead of most people when they think yeah. about money. A lot of people think that money needs to actually represent, um, it actually needs to have underlying value. Money has no underlying value. Money is only valuable in the sense that it's easy to transact. Like, that's the whole reason we have money. If, if we wanted money to be valuable like cars, you know, that, that, it would be a waste of its purpose. You know, cars aren't easy to, to move around and to digitally and break into small pieces. Dollars are good for that. Bitcoin is better than that. Yeah. But, um, but, but yeah, so. We'll have pamphlets if you're interested in uh, learning more. Yeah, because I'm sure you need to go. You know, it's take up too much. No, no, here we go. Uh, what is anarchy and peace for parents? Okay, so my name is Cal, by the way. Seth. Seth? Pleasure to meet you, Seth. And this is uh, my friend, Sky. Happy to meet you. Right. Take good you. care, Seth. You'll have uh, rich, diverse communities competing, providing, uh, catering to your preferences, right? Yeah, An apartment right. complex is 420 friendly then, and one across the street that's not. So, like, economic um, competition versus only one company, like Walmart providing everything. Yeah. Um, but at least real contracts, yeah. because a social contract is not a real contract, right? You never yeah, signed yeah, it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you never you never gave consent for social security, for example, mm -hmm. right? That's a forced service before you were born. Um, so that's where I, I would want to go. A real tangible contract, real agreements, real discussions, you know, something tangible like a car payment or a mortgage contract on my house or something, mm -hmm. you know? Um, like when you go to a club, you consent to the rules. But even they provide free security, like the bouncer, right? Yeah. You go to a mall, there's security there on the Segway, right? Mm -hmm. If you live at a golf course community, right? There's homeowners associations, roads are still provided, security's right there in the front gate. So you still have all these communities of preferences and all these needs being met. But at least it's voluntary, right? At least none of them is violently forcing those ideas of preferences onto anyone. Right. It's just pretty much a free market trying to to meet your demands, to meet your needs. Yeah. I guess my response is like, I kind of see government as still the most efficient way of agreeing on um, on a law that works for people. Like, obviously it doesn't leave room for free choice in that sense. Yeah. But um, if people were able to agree or to have like different ideas of what laws should be in place, the best way to kind of like even that out and make at best a wish-washy system of like compromise isn't the government right. as opposed to different groups. I mean, so I'm not really sure. I guess like practically, practically wise, I'm not sure how that the idea of anarchy would manifest itself. Uh, and okay. Well, there's a lot of examples yeah. of it that exist. I mean, uh, large scale, like small scale. I see. All right. Well, large you know, scale, something. Uh, all right. Like you look at uh, anytime you have a monopoly on anything, though, the cost yeah. always goes up. And we were talking about the efficiency. Government is efficient. Efficiency goes down. Yeah, the efficiency goes down in government. The cost right. always rises. That's why you never have social security, mm -hmm. and the quality always depreciates. You know, that's why USPS, a monopoly on first class mail, delivering pieces of paper, uh, sixteen billion dollars in debt. 97% of the value of the dollar in your pocket has lost its value, right? Because you also have a monopoly on, on currency, pieces of paper, right? Yeah. Um, whereas the contrast in the free market is that you look like Paso Springs TVs that came out several years ago. They cost several thousand dollars and kind of big in, uh, in, in the size of that, but now you can buy a better version for a few hundred bucks, right? Mm -hmm. So in a free market, it's the complete opposite. The cost always goes down and the quality continues to improve. Efficiency improves. Right. Right. But because you have a monopoly on services, there's no need to improve them because you have no competition. You have no need to improve our product because no one else is competing because you've all outlaw competition. Right? Yeah. So that's, just, that's why it allows to stagnate and be idle um, in forms of its inefficiency of uh, the government provides. And that's why it's like yeah. driving around the moon here in Richmond, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, People will. Businesses. People that are paid to pick up trash? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start a business, sir. Yeah, absolutely. 
What about the trash men that currently pick it up? That would be immoral. <laughs> yeah, well, what, yeah. But yeah, you mean you want to violently force your preference on me? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good to know who the uh, local psychopaths are. Um, well, do you have any other questions? Yeah, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Um, when you were talking about the efficiency of the, like with the economic example, you're talking about the efficiency, how it goes up and the price goes down as the quality goes up. Um, and that comes from competition between numerous groups, not just one. What if instead of working to make that within the, like split the government into different groups, we work and we look at the international system as it exists now? Because we don't have a monarchy of government overall. Or like, you know, we don't have a monopoly of government, I mean. For the whole world, we right. have competing governments. Right. So what That's if we exactly set it up? That's exactly the best argument for anarchy, if you want to look at it. And if you regard the interactions between individual states, yeah, they interact like individual <laughs> human beings would interact in an anarchy. Well, mm -hmm. If you if you get rid of the UN, the UN, which is an attempt at some sort of, thing. Yeah. but the different states, you know, governments around the world interact with each other like mm -hmm. people would interact with no ruler above. Them. Right. And they make. It. They figure it out. Right. They also resort to violence at times. But, mm -hmm. I mean, no one is begging for one ruler of the entire world. We right. recognize that that would be an error. Yeah. So I guess, like, with that example, we, we see that there are good consequences, but that... I mean, I guess it ultimately boils down to our conception of human nature. Right. Because if you believe that and and that the humans are naturally estranged, yeah. then an idea of anarchy wouldn't work because with our net, with our current right. well, not necessarily. Actually, actually, that's a good point because yeah. I, I used to come from a hobbyist point of view too myself. Yeah. Uh, so the thing is, though, if everyone's evil, though, then governments you don't want to create a government because then you have the most evilest people who are now in control of that power, right? So that's like the last thing you want to create for yeah. evil people to have in control of over other people's lives, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a, that's a actually interesting a natural that's argument that's against that, right? If everyone's yeah, in evil, a way, yeah, yeah, yeah in a way. Um, but that's also assuming that there can't be good and bad. Right, and that's and that's what know? I'm trying to. I guess I, I do a YouTube show trying to show people that actually we all share these fundamental values against violence. Right. right? You know, asking those three questions. So yeah, actually, I, I don't use violence to solve my problems. For the most part, the majority of us don't. Yeah. Right. So let's unite with these, these fundamental values that everybody do share, and let's turn to our community and solve these problems in the same manner that we already do in our own lives, mm -hmm. and turn away from that which <laughs> that contradicts that. That only knows how to solve problems with violence. Right. Yeah. Um, I have a question. You were talking about you were a uh, Hobbesian. What is that? In a way, like just yeah, in the yeah, idea that just to the idea that I think that um, human beings of agree to give up some of their rights in order to be ruled by something else. Um, and that what that avoids worse consequences. So like we agree to give up our right to do whatever we want and by having a police force to enforce the laws. You know, like so we can't go out and like and decide to steal something because we think it would be best for us yeah. not to have other people be able to like kill us if they wanted and other things like that. And do you think um, that's what when you say we agree or people do this, who are you referring to? Um well whoever made the social contract in the first place. No, oh, coming in or like, there. But I, I mean, Yeah. So whatever. Outside observer. I don't know. I don't really know who exactly. Well, the reason why I ask that is yeah. I don't agree to that. I don't I don't wish to give up any of my rights as you call them in yeah. order to receive other services. I don't I don't wish to do that. Um, so I, I for one don't agree to that. Cal for two doesn't agree to that. Yeah. Um, I would never wish to give that up. And I don't believe mm -hmm. that anyone else can choose to give that up for me. I, I guess mm -hmm. that's a question I have for you. Do you think that someone else by writing a social contract and saying we agree therefore somehow binds you to such an agreement? You personally, well, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I don't. Um, think like I haven't really thought about it in that way. I guess. It, assuming that you can think about it as the right thing to do anyway, then I wouldn't mind somebody have having um, decided that for me, like before I was even born, for example. So, like the American Constitution. If you agree that it's a efficient way of like having government and stuff, then I don't mind that, that I live under that system. I don't mind that I was born into a system where there are laws already. 
being so born into a system that ignores those laws. Uh, technically, we're in a Fourth Amendment free zone. Fourth, sixth, eighth, and ninth Amendment. And the thing about the Constitution, though, it's not a real contract, though, right? There's no power of attorney. Uh, you can't sign a contract onto anyone's behalf. Uh, you know, not all of them actually signed it. Uh, yeah, that's right. So they, they created a contract that was only binding to those people who signed it. You can't force that particular contract onto the unborn generation, right? Uh, that, that, that would be considered wrong, right? Especially if someone were to sign your name on there without your consent, right? There was no power of attorney. Um, so you look at the Constitution as a contract and it's kind of null and void if it doesn't apply to you. You never actually explicitly gave your implied consent. Right. right. And Relating to consent and contracts, when we do things like you're talking about all the time, where we kind of anticipate that someone else consents to what we're about to do. You know, like I come up and I say, hey, and you're smiling, and I say, like, hey, how's it going, right? And I just, I think, and you know, right then I anticipate, like, hey, I'm not going to violate this guy's consent. He thinks right. it's okay if I touch him like that. Right? And as long as it was okay, I've done nothing yeah. wrong. That's kind of the situation you're talking about. Like, if someone had made a choice for me that then I agree with, I find no fault. Right. right. Yeah, I mean, obviously you can't. I wasn't around. Right, yeah, yeah. Agree at first. Um, but should, yeah. you should, when it's an ongoing situation, so something like someone's going to come every day and do that to you, um, I believe that you should have the ability to say, you know, I don't consent to that. I don't want someone to tell you, I don't want this to go on, even though someone already decided for me, and heretofore I considered it a good thing. I no longer do, and I don't want this. So it's an ability to opt out. Yeah. The Without to... that, I would claim it's not real consent. It's something called consent, something called a contract. You know? Whoa, I don't um, think I know and it, it horrifies us when we put it in any other realm. You know, if you, yeah. there was talk a while back, uh, I remember about uh, contracts for, to try to avoid being charged with rape. Oh, yeah. Contracts that, you know, we'll, we'll sign a contract where we agree that this sex is consensual. And people were up and on to, no, 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 because what if you start having sex and then you decide, I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. And then you want to back out. No, there's a contract, you know. And I think anyone would say, well, hell, no, I would never do that. I always reserve the right to back out of that, you know. And what's, what's the difference, you know, I think sex mm. is a good example because it's a realm where we have a visceral reaction. We go, oh, yeah, don't violate consent right, there's there. But it's really no different. It's just, it's, it's our bodies, you know, our, our consent, or, you know, whether you touch me, you gun against me, you be in a cage, you know. Yeah. That should not be done to me unless I've somehow violated it because you're doing it to protect yourself. And the government is an entity that, by its very systematic makeup, continually violates that consent on a regular basis. Hmm. People all over. That is, I mean, that's yeah. an argument for why government is inherently in itself immoral. And if you yeah. eliminated all violations of consent, you'd end up with an institution that Cal and I would no longer call government. You, know? you could have lots of those other things, like services provided, etc. But please don't touch anyone without their consent. Please don't threaten to touch them, certainly not with lead bullets that yeah. go really mm -hmm. fast. I guess so. A remedy to the situation would be able would be the ability to having up an, an option to opt out, right? Yeah. Right. So Which what we would don't have. but what would that look like for like what would you guys recommend or like okay. or like to see? Yeah. All right. All right. Um, yeah. Assuming I'm, that the system kind of like majority of it remains similar, like would there be an option of like being able to opt out individually? Well, I, I guess if that were the case, we'd have anarchy. That yeah, would yeah. be anarchy. That would be anarchy. Immediately. That, that's option. Anarchy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like, it, it wouldn't be called taxation anymore. It would be called charity, right? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. if, you want to give. if you wish. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's an uh, option now. If um, you would like to get locked in a box if you <laughs> smoke this plant, then you can't. But if you wouldn't like to be, <laughs> yeah. you know, and almost no one will mm. choose that. Maybe someone will, because for some reason they like it. They have sure. a fetish or something. You know, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of kinky people. So. But, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, that, that's what it looked like. So all the people that thought, you know, I really, you know, I, you know, I want to be legislated against, to, you know, for certain things. You know, I want that. You know, mm -hmm. and then they can do that for as long as they want. And as soon as they wish not to, they could opt out. You know, it would be just like any other. You know, like. Yeah. yeah, like a hug. We hug each other as long as we want until someone says, yeah, I don't want to be touched anymore, yeah. thanks. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's what we're talking about, is physical contact and violence, really. Yeah. You should be able to opt out of a hug, you should definitely be able yeah. to opt out of the jail cell. <laughs> so I guess it's pretty much the freedom to give consent and withdraw that anytime. 
yeah. right? For freedom to associate and disassociate. Right. Um, and of course, on the government, you, they don't allow that. <laughs> they don't have the freedom to disassociate from that. Um, and that's uh, pretty much what we're out here pretty much talking about, trying to push yeah. forward. Um, we're part of a non-political organization called Liberate RVA, uh, trying to turn to our community, trying to talk about these ideas, yeah, and trying to uh, have a peaceful transition towards a uh, free and voluntary society, away from that which contradicts our moral values to begin with. Oh, yeah. I mean, I think at the very least, it's important to talk and yeah. to say, you know, Does even if you don't here? agree with the like Have ultimate, you been here for like, an hour? like method of doing it, that like to agree not to allow violence yeah. in different areas, but uh, regardless yeah, yeah, yeah. of how you define it. Yeah, like, but, like yeah. the fact that we, like uh, we argue, we prefer to discuss yeah. rather than using violent methods, right? Right. right. Prefer to find peaceful, non-violent ways. Uh, no, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and that's, 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 that's supposed to be already a natural preference, See, like, an inclination to talk some some voluntary way to, to solve our problems, to mm -hmm. discuss, to get to a better place. Right. I have so you one have thought. When we were talking about the UN earlier, mm -hmm. um, and how the current nation state system kind of reflects anarchy in a way. Yeah. Like yeah. how each state has their own self interest, and they sometimes, like for example, when we were deciding, uh, when the UN. When the U.S. wanted to go into Mine is, uh, Operation Desert Storm, Prism. we tried to get uh, allies to say, who wants to join us? The U.N. rejected it. You know, like, right. but we were like, come on, you know, the whose interest like is it to join? And then other, obviously it was this, like, question of violence, ultimately, but pushing that out of the question, like, just in terms, just for the sake of the example, uh, we tried to convince others that it was within their interest and people had the option to opt out, right? Something tonight. Um... But that also, went to the, uh, that the ability Do you want me to give you the presentation led to the possibility of having great bad consequences. Like, All right, so for example, with World War I, the nationalism of the Serbs was able to, and the alliance system was able to create a small centralized conflict and spread it because people realized that it was within their best interest to right, fight for a certain question. thing. Do you think it is wrong um, whereas with the UN, which we said was a kind of idea of like okay. maybe a more centralized government, government that, that provides a place for d neutral they discussion. War, they lock people up. Uh, like stable they place for you and call right. it taxes. So what you guys they do is a criminal about monopoly that. On because violence. well, the example, the, the, the problem with that is that the, well, the, that's, which you realize yourself in the very examples that you picked were examples of aggression, violent conflict. It was an initiation. That's how he structures. It wasn't. So, I mean, yeah. that little so Desert Storm, for example, anarchy, um, we didn't. That's how he gets into the you know, We didn't go in and just, say, you know, I know okay, I, they're I, they get caught Ted, up in John, and usually I'm here to Bradley, say, like, and they <laughs> punched, you, you know, they before, shot people, so um, we'll go stop them from shooting more people. You know, waking people up. United States and some others sent troops in. And just but then again, people are like, no, the government using force good against too. anybody and everybody yeah, that you know sure yeah. looked yeah. like someone <laughs> <laughs> thought was associated. You, you know, true. Um, you, you so that so it's, it's a, the exact situation yeah. that you hear? that we no. that we're trying to yeah. avoid. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. of course, yeah. we lead to you know mm -hmm. yeah. it's yeah. conflict either way. So but if you look at something like international trade, that would be a better example. Okay, and in which this is actually free speech trade. So imagine this a green area. You are free to speak. Right here. But when you see an outside of it, like research that yourself, yourself look into you actually have to and it's effect on international trade and world trade organization and it's effect on Yeah, what if I do what if I do that? And um, that's you and, and, and see whether you think international trade well, is yeah. helped or hindered by the UN versus mm. just the country is fine, but it's in the middle of the whole walk with yeah. um, but then with respect to the actual if where even if we abstract it away from the problem of the violent situation. World War One Individual people, you said they acted in their best interest. They thought it was you know, best for them. So. Yeah, and they. And I don't think. Yeah, they I don't think that's. Like that. I mean, maybe you make the argument that was the case each person, but most people probably didn't. The average soldier didn't have a good idea of what was going on. Um, yeah, aside you know, from they, the basic like yeah, they went to war. Like, hey, war was yeah, happening, sorry. right? Mm -hmm. um, and I don't believe that the UN has any way to stop that from happening, other than going to war too. 
Um, right. So I think you can pick well, they can do two situations. Yeah, and so could well, individual which is countries, a sense of which violence they have. According to that. Right. Yeah. I mean, you could look, I guess, trying to find a, a centralized government that's trying to well, try to prevent this sort of action. But then you look at uh, you know, pretty much every war since like, World War II has been a legal call for war, uh, not approved by Congress. Uh, so you create this document, even going back to a social contract, trying to limit the growth of like, this government, but the, the, the office only continues to increase. Uh, so uh, again, a piece of paper what? doesn't hold uh, the limitations no, of the size of a government from continuing to grow. Uh, but a real contract that we do with having each other, you know, with real agreements, uh, can. Uh, yeah. uh, we can agree, like, again, like in boxing, we agree to the consequences of that. Like they you know, we have real, tangible, voluntary agreement and consent. Mm -hmm. uh, we really don't have much of consent uh, with, like, the political rulers, like in Congress, right? Yeah. You can't really uh, negotiate with them. They are the ones who are can arbitrarily dictate and decide, of course, the preference upon you. Tell you what you can and cannot do with your body, but the thing is not the same with you and the politician, right? You can't can't tell us that same individual, that stranger, the same thing. The radio? Yeah. Right. Well, I have pamphlets if you're interested in uh, more information. Yeah, I know. Yeah, sure, I'll take a pamphlet. Yeah, I mean, the points you bring up are good. I think the... Mm -hmm. There are things to think about, at least. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, history yeah. of World like War I versus like, yeah. the history of the Gulf War. Yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good example. Yeah. But it's also, if you, you brought it up in the in, it kind of in the realm of the, no, it the analogy of individual states compared to individual human beings. I mean, either way, they're very Yeah, that does have problems um, with them making those good. Yeah. But if you want to just stick with World War One, and you know, and go back to just like, hey, this claim that asked me how government is immoral. Um, World War One is only possible, or anything like it. The Gulf War, you know, the storm is only possible through governments. Uh, yeah. If you get rid of governments, I guess hypothetically you could have um, someone that would independently and you know spend millions upon millions and billions trillions of dollars. We spent in Afghanistan and Iraq around 1.4 trillion. You know, you have to have someone to spend all that to decide to go bomb some people. Um, just is very unlikely. Uh, as well as anyone did that, everyone would realize that yeah. was very wrong. You know, that person would be hard pressed to find support. Um, and if someone did do that, that would just be the situation we're in now. You know, so kind of worst case scenario is you end up with people that act like our governments act today. Hmm. I mean, yeah. that is the yeah. that is the horror storm is you know huge global wars and that's what governments do. Well, the governments can fund the uh, standing armies because yeah. through tax taxation. Yeah. So without taxation, there's, without government, there's no taxation. Without taxation, there's no standing armies. Uh, like Blackwater, for example, the only reason they're able to do what they are today is because of the grants from the taxes that are given from government. Yeah, they're contracted. Yeah. Mm. So without government taxation, there's no Blackwater, there's, uh, there's no Monsanto, there's no corporations. Um, it's just a piece of paper back and forth by government to allow you to escape personal liability for your actions. So there's none of that. So we get rid of pretty much all the that's the problems that's been kind of created uh, through the government in the first place. Hmm. Yeah. I think your guys' like, logic makes sense in the idea that problems are created by how people interact. Yeah. Um, whereas I tend to think more that problems are inherent. That there's something inherently messed up within us before okay, yeah, 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 yeah. we even... And, then, and that's actually what this particular piece here, piece of parenting is all about. Uh, yeah. yeah. So this, so the thing is, you can't just be against state violence. You have to be against all violence, especially the violence we to each other. And most important, the violence is on the children. Like spanking children, only not only uh, teaches them that violence is a way to solve problems in this world when they grow up, but uh, you know, even spanking, this is defined as like hitting a child with the intention of modifying a behavior, yeah. leads to a drop of IQ points, creates a reduction in lifespan to 20 years, leads to 48 percent greater chance of contracting cancer, leads to massive increases in drug addiction, alcoholism, criminality, suicide, depression. Anxiety. Mm -hmm. This has to be traumatic enough for the child when that child is still growing up, the brain is still developing until the age of four, to create a lot of these negative consequences for, the, um, for that child when they become into adulthood. Uh, so yeah, that's where a lot of uh, the source of a lot of these problems comes today, the way we, we treat them. We don't treat them as human beings. Uh, and so that's, that's, 
that's that part yeah, of the whole thing. So that, 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 that's my, that was my like concern too. Like before, but funny that it, it was with the, uh, it's all NSA. about the way that yeah. we initiate yeah. that aggression uh, to each other. Right. That seems that's like the central core of the problem yeah, of yeah, what we have today. Yeah, I guess I guess my thinking behind it is the reason that we are able to mess up relationships with each other is that we're messed up inside naturally. So any relation, for me, any relation therefore is going to be imperfect yeah. and government yeah, well, and, ju and the idea of justice is, is yeah. the best human way of controlling or at least setting norms for behavior. Right. Now I'm Still, I'm also Christian, so I believe no, that there's like, a lot that, that mercy yeah. and love yeah. are ultimately yeah. more important yeah. than, yeah. than yeah. Than, yeah. and redemption are more important than strict right. justice punishment consequences. But, but um, well, the idea that <laughs> that's good, but, like, but before right. you yeah. Yeah. before you can really like. But you need justice to convince somebody that something is wrong. And you, before you can redeem them, you need to show them that I'm saving you from this sense of justice. <laughs> like real, so like, the, most the idea with Christianity was that Christ died so that he could um, save people from God's wrath. So like, between hell and heaven is your con your actions no longer have to have the immediate consequence of going to hell. So here on earth, we can still have government. Like, there's, according to the Christian belief, there's still going to be heaven and hell. And so on earth, there's still government. There's still the idea of freedom or jail. Um, oppression, unoppression. But within that system, there can be the possibility of, hey, I'm reaching out, I'm doing things that aren't required. So like an anarchy of sorts within this current system. Yeah. An anarchy of like love and compassion within the idea of justice. Right, yeah, you know. there's still justice and anarchy, there's still laws to create all this stuff. Uh, there's no monopoly on judges, so they're not going to hold you contempt of court because they don't like what you're wearing. Yeah. Right? Uh, there's still any belief, any ideology, any idea, all of this is welcome. As long as, again, we're not violently forcing these into anyone else. Right? Correct. Uh, persuasion, <laughs> rationalizing. I mean, even, even God writes, you know, do not steal, you know, do not murder. Right? Uh, taxes are anything but that. And so it's, um, so I find that, I, mean, I, I feel kind of tricked in that itself. I used to kind of, I come from a Hobbes point of view, but even if you look at Hobbes himself, there's a lot of material resources that says like, he himself didn't really have a really good childhood growing up. You know, his yeah. father abandoned him. You know, so I can kind of see him kind of growing up and say, you know, to hell with everyone. Everyone's natural born evil, right? Uh, versus, you know, the tabula rasa, uh, opposition to that. Uh, you're just born with the kids' slates, and this pretty much is nature and nurture kind of combination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know, it's interesting. Well, my name is Cal. Yeah, it was nice to meet you. Cal, Cal right? Yeah, Cal. Okay, okay, what was your name again? Ty, T-Y. Ty? Yeah. Nice to meet you guys. Yeah. What's your um, name again? Michael. Michael. That's so, all I mean. <laughs> if, I, if I think of something next yeah. time when you're out, I'm pretty much out here every day. We do monthly freedom gatherings, so you're more than welcome to come. Okay. On the website, we have an events page, so potlucks, philosophical discussions, just like this, and trying to find uh, solutions and answers and trying to join, trying to create a community. Okay, um, sweet. Yeah. yeah, it was nice talking with you guys. Yeah. So, uh, take care, Michael.